Good evening YouTube viewers and subscribers. So on my bench today I've got not what this box says it is. It is a Fox and it is an Eagle. But it is basically a $20 engine. It was $10 for the engine and $10 for shipping. Now this is an engine, the Fox Eagle, that dates back to, oh, probably 1972 or so. Um, externally this engine looks pretty darn nice. Uh, the fellow that was selling it on RC Groups didn't really say much about it other than it's completely stuck and all of the things that he had ever tried, he tried to free it up and he really only mentioned heat and solvent. So I mean this engine is locked solid. So I have very little choice other than to just begin disassembly of this engine but this is an engine that like I said is pretty old um, it's got a you know interesting history and let me just see if we can start disassembling this engine I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with this thing instead of going and oiling it up and heating it and all that kind of crap what I'm gonna do initially here is just try and disassemble as much as I can and then put it in my LA's totally awesome cleaner vibrate it a lot leave it in there overnight and see if that helps free anything up and I'll take it from there so I can't even look at the side of the piston I can tell that it looks like it's been used because there's some carbon residue on here So here's the inside. Now this is really unfortunate because, oh wait, maybe not. Maybe I can salvage this gasket. If I'm lucky and careful. Woohoo! Look at that. Cool. So that's one gasket I don't have to worry about. So I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really look all that bad in there. Sure, it's froze up solid. And I could just oil it and heat it, but quite honestly, I don't really even want to mess with that. I'd rather just see if I can just take it all apart or at least I'll wait until I get this head off and then we'll take it from there maybe I can just try heat and oil I just don't feel like getting my hands all oily tonight it's a lot easier for me just to throw this in the parts cleaner and let it do its job but if I do that, I'm definitely replacing bearings, which probably need to be done anyway. I don't know if you noticed, this is the original one. No, that's not bent. It was actually made for the uh, glow plug to be at that odd angle. This is yet another a Duke Fox thing, I'm sure. Oh, okay, so we do have some definite runtime on there. And oh wow, look at that. The inside of that sleeve looks like it's. I don't know if that's rust. <sighs> looks like it's kind of coming out. I don't know. And the carb is completely froze up also. Top of the head doesn't look too bad, or the bottom of the head. I don't know. You know, the more I'm looking at it now, I'm thinking maybe I should just oil the living crap out of this and uh, soak it in some 3-in-1 oil overnight and then in the morning maybe after work sometime tomorrow heat the living crap out of it here's the kicker can I get this can I get lucky and have this gasket be survive very good very 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 good that's cool so I got two gaskets that are good so I don't know maybe I should just uh, douse this thing seriously with oil you know what I think I'm gonna do though I think for the carb I am gonna throw that in the cleaner and that'll be my test case I'll run that overnight 
or let it sit in there. It won't run overnight. It only runs on eight minute cycles. But I'll let that, in fact, uh, yeah, all these screws could probably use a cleaning too. Um, but this, maybe I'll just throw a whole bunch of oil in here and just let it sit in the garage in a bag overnight. And then I'll just heat it up really heavily, strap a prop to it and see if I can get it to turn over that way. I think that's what I'm going to do with this. So, okay, so the ultrasonic is going in the background, and that's the noise you're hearing. So look at this. Check this out. The fellow that I got this from said he tried all kinds of stuff, solvent and heat, and I just put some three-in-one oil in here, put a drop in here, some down the piston, and a bunch down here. Well, it wouldn't go down there. And I heated this thing on my highest setting on my heat gun for literally less than two minutes and I've got it rotating over and this sleeve wanting to come out. So, uh, maybe the fellow I got this from just really doesn't have a clue. Because that's kind of what it seems like. Or maybe he just didn't really want to put the effort into it. So now all I'm going to do is go heat this up some more. Uh, I have a feeling that ring is probably stuck. I have a feeling the ring is probably maybe rusted to the side of the sleeve and it could be a little bit tougher to free that up and I believe it's still pretty warm. Let's see how many. I thought I read that this had two piston rings. Shit. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see. So I don't, I don't know. The rings could end up getting broke too, but we'll go see what I can do here. But anyway, uh, less than three minutes of heating and oil, and I've got it turning over. So prognosis is pretty good at this point. This is just too hilarious. Likewise, same thing with this. This came out of the ultrasonic cleaner after an eight minute cycle and it looks all nice and clean and then I just hit it and it was still stuck solid. So I hit it with some trusty 3-in-1 oil went out and heated it up for about 45 seconds and look guess what now carb rotates freely. Now I've had to move it around a couple times like this to get it this free it was just moving slowly but you can see it's moving and with more 3-in-1 oil in there it won't lock up and freeze up again. So this carb is now, I won't say it's fully functional. I'll say it's movable. So, you know, this goes to show you, somebody says they can't free up an engine and they want to throw it away. And uh, this is what I end up getting. I get a $20 engine that hopefully I'll probably have running again here in no time. Uh, as far as the head or the rest of the casing, as you saw, I was able to rotate the crankshaft through, but the piston rings were completely froze up in the uh, sleeve still. So what I decided to do with that, instead of doing anything else with it, was I dropped that in the carburetor, the gunk carb cleaner. And I'll leave that in there overnight and see if that does anything. But before I did that, I also put just a little bit of CLR on the top of the piston. Let it sit there for about a minute. I don't know if that's long enough to help dissolve any of that rust or not, if that's if that's what's going on with that. Um, so that's in the carb cleaner tonight. This, as far as I'm concerned, is done. The head is the only thing that's still left in the uh, ultrasonic right now, and that's what's going, and it's probably done too. So anyway, hopefully we'll have a running Fox Eagle 60 here in a little while. I don't know what the bearings are going to look like, but I may have to get bearings on order. But other than that, I think I should be able to get this engine running. Okay, so it's the next morning and this uh, engine part came out of the gunk carburetor cleaner. It didn't really seem to clean the engine much and I brushed it off, sprayed it down with alcohol. Now as you can see, the sleeve is still coming up with it. Um, but I do have the piston rings freed up from the sleeve and I pulled the sleeve out 
And then I notice that it's again one of those things where it looks like you have to extract the piston pin from the back of the crankcase. And I decided the hell with that. I'm not going to try and do that in its state right now. Um, to me, this rear bearing looks like it's in good enough condition that it could run like this. And it feels, you know, for the age, I don't know if the bearings have ever been replaced in this engine, but it feels like it's pretty smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reassemble this engine and put it on the stand and attempt to run it and tune it at least one time. And if it doesn't sound or feel right after that, I'll determine then. Because I found that even with the OS Surpass engines, the best means to get these uh, wrist pins out is if you've got an engine that's in an operational state, the best thing to do is just run the thing, get it up to operating temperature and all those parts moving and everything like that, and then it makes it much easier to pull that pin out as opposed to just trying to heat it and use oil because that piston and the connecting rod motion and actually moving is a lot better than just static heating it and trying to lube it and get it to come out and I've had 100% success every time I've run an engine prior to pulling the uh, wrist or the piston pin out so I'm not sure if I'm going to go even that far with this engine like I said now that it's freed up I can at least just put it back together and try and run it after that I really have no desire to run the engine anymore anyway so I'll probably just run it and then put it up because it's kind of like a nice little item from the past